This tute's going to talk about regression. It just means fitting a line or a curve to a set of data. And in further maths, most of all, we're going to be using straight line graphs, something like this that you're used to seeing. And that's in the form y equals mx plus c, usually. That's a straight line graph, it's linear. So what we're going to be doing is a lot of linear regression. And there are three methods that they teach for doing this in further maths. The first is by eye, fitting a linear regression line. The next one is using the three median method. And then we use the least squares regression line. Now this one here by eye simply means using your eyes, having a look at it and kind of vaguely guessing where a line could go. Because of that, everyone's answers are slightly different. So this doesn't often occur on an exam, but you may get it in a sack or something like that. So it's worth knowing what that is. But the main two that we'll be looking at are the three median method and the least squares regression line. One of the simplest ways to plot a regression line onto a scatter plot is to do it by eye, which simply means having a look at it and just making your best guess about where a line could fit this data appropriately. So here's one that I've drawn on, and the method I've used for finding where this could go is trying to balance how many points are above and below the line. So I've got five dots up here, one, two, three, four, five, and I've got five dots below, one, two, three, four, five. And I've tried to put the line roughly in the center of kind of those two groupings above and below. And that's a way of finding where a trend line could go by eye. The next step in this would be finding what the equation of the line is. And you just do that by finding a couple of points. So here I've got the intercept. I know that one there, that's going to be at 0, 1, because that's where it's crossing the y-intercept. And another point I can see here is at the coordinate 2 for x, we have the coordinate 2 for y. So that's the point 2, 2. Now I'm going to put my equation in the form y equals mx plus c, because I have this straight line. I have a linear graph. So using two points, I can either find my gradient by saying the difference in y over the difference in x, which would be 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 0. Or I can just look at the rise over the run. Here we've risen a distance of 1 because we've gone from the 1 coordinate up to the 2 coordinate. So this here, the rise, is 1. So I just get 1. And run along here, I've run a distance of 2 because I've gone from 0 to 2. So the rise over run is 1 over 2. Now I know my m part of the equation. I have y equals a half x plus c. And the plus c part is just going to be the y-intercept, which is positive 1. That's where it was crossing here. So plus 1, and that's the equation of this line. So a little bit more refreshing practice on how to find the equation of a line. Here's a graph, find the equation of the line. It's straight, it's linear, so we know it's going to be in the form y equals mx plus c. We need to find m and we need to find c. c is the y-intercept, so we just read off the graph. Here I can see it's crossing at positive 7. So c is going to be 7. Now the m is the gradient, so for that I need two points on the line. So I'm going to put my ruler on the page and put it over one of the x-coordinates and see if I can work out where it crosses the y-axis. Now here I can see when we're on the 3 line for the x at this point here, then at the y-axis it's crossing right at about 13. So I have found the point 3, 13. So there's that point there, 3, 13. And I have a second point on the graph already because it's right here at the y-intercept. When x is 0, y is 7. So to find my m, I just need to do the difference in y divided by the difference in x. So y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it doesn't matter which order you put these coordinates in, you'll get the same answer. And I'll show you what I mean. If I choose this y first, so these are the 1 coordinates and these are the 2 coordinates. I say the first y, 13, minus the second y, 7 over the first x, 3, minus the second x, 0. I get 13 minus 7, which is 6, over 3 minus 0 is 3. So 6 over 3 is 2. Now if I did those the other way, calling these the, y, the 
two coordinates and these the one coordinates, I would have had the first y, 7, minus the second y, 13, over the first, zero, the first x, 0, minus the second x, 3, and I would have, got, would have gotten 7 minus 13 equals negative 6, over 0 minus 3 is negative 3, two negatives makes a positive, so I still end up with positive 2. So long as you don't do 13 minus 3 over 7 minus 0, you'll work, at, you'll work it out alright. doesn't matter which coordinates is the first one and the second one. Take the y's away from each other and then the x's away from each other, using them in the right order. So these two must be from the same pair and these two must be from the same pair. Okay, so we've worked out our m is 2. Now we can write this out. The other way to find m would have been to use the rise over run method. So drawing our little imaginary triangle here, we have a rise, we've gone from 7 up to 13, so we rose how many? 6, and we ran from 0 over to 3, so we ran how many? 3. Rise over run equals 6 over 3, which is 2. Just another way of thinking about it. Either method, the m is 2, and so we have y equals 2x plus 7. Here's another graph. Let's practice that one more time. Let's find the equation of this line. So it's straight lines. We're looking for something in the form y equals mx plus c. c is our y-intercept. And what do you know? I can read it right off the graph. It's occurring halfway between 14 and 16, so it looks like it's happening at 15. I've got the point here, 0, 15. And I know my c is 15, positive 15. Now I'm trying to find the m. Now I know it's going to be negative something because this graph has got a negative gradient. It's going down the hill. And I need to find a second point to find it. But what do you know? I've also got the x-intercept on this one. So I can see the point here, 180, 0. So now I've got two points. I can use rise over run, which would be looking at this rise. But if you notice, it's not rising. It's falling. It's going down. So this is a negative 15 for our rise, which is actually a fall, and we're running along here a distance of 180. So we've got negative 15 over 180 for rise over run. And if you simplify that fraction, you get negative 1 over 12. So that's going to be our m. Using the method y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, We'll say this one here, 15 minus, what's the y-coordinate? 0 over 0 minus, what's the x-coordinate? 180. So we get 15 over negative 180. Simplifying that down, we get negative 1 on 12. So that's going to be our m. We then just rewrite the equation. y equals negative 1 on 12x plus 15. You might see this in the format y equals negative x on 12 plus 15. And the reason for that is this x out the side can just be put on the numerator, the top part of a fraction. Because if you think about it, you have negative 1 on 12 times x, which is times x over 1. How do we times out fractions? We times the top and we times the bottom. So negative 1 times x is just negative x, and 12 times 1 is just 12. So if you have an x sitting out the front of something like this, you can plonk it onto the numerator if you want to. The reason I point that out, it's perfectly okay to write it in this format, but on a multiple choice exam you might see it written like this. And don't be confused, these two things are the same. They're just written slightly differently. Back to how that applies to regression. Here's one more scatter plot. Let's try and put a linear regression line on this scatter plot by i. So let's try and balance how many dots are on either side of the line. It's going in a negative direction, so my line's going to be going this way. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 points. So I want to have 6 below and 6 above. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those can be my below group. So these ones here will be in my below group and these six here will be in my above group. 
So I'm going to try and put a line in between there like that. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, there we go. Now I just need to figure out what the equation of this line that I've drawn on there by i is. So y equals mx plus c. What have I done with the y-intercept? Looks like I'm making it cross at 10. So c is 10. And I need another point for my m part. So what's happening when x is 6? Looks like when x is 6, y is 6. So let's use that. We've got the point 6, 6. And over here, we've got the point 0, 10. So my m is going to be negative because it's a negative graph. Here I've got a fall from 10 down to 6, so that's a fall of 4. And a run over here, we've gone from 0 up to 6. So my rise over run is negative 4 over 6, which is negative 2 on 3. Using the other method, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Let's call these the 2's and these the 1's, so I'll start with this. 6 minus, what's the y coordinate? 10 over 6 minus, what's the x coordinate? 0. So I get negative 4 on 6, which is negative 2 on 3. So my m is negative 2 on 3. So I have y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 10. Or I could write this as y equals negative 2x on 3 plus 10. And that's linear regression by i.